This is Twit. Chip, you're in charge of capturing and preparing the content, the video images that we see for distribution from the Olympics. Um, how long have you how long have you been involved in that? Uh, NBC's been doing it for a long time, right? No, NBC's been doing it uh, for a long time. Uh, I first got involved with the Olympics in 1988 as a technical manager at the rowing can canoeing venues in Seoul, Korea. So that mm. was my first Olympics and my first taste of the Olympics. And uh, I've been on every one that NBC's done since then. So Wow. Uh, <laughs> I, in, in my capacity, though, as uh, you know, in charge of the venue engineering planning effort, I've only started that doing that officially since uh, '99. So mm. when we had the first big group of uh, five Olympic Games, uh, that's when I came on board to uh, assist uh, with the planning of those games. Mm -hmm. Now the games happen every two years. Now that they've separated the summer and winter Olympics. Uh, so they alternate. Uh, it used to be a four-year cycle. It kind of still is if you count only one of those. Um, but how long uh, does it take two years to prepare for each game? I mean, uh, you know, is that really a full-time job for you and presumably other people just to get ready for the games every two years? Well, it it, it is. Uh, it does take a couple of years. Actually, it takes longer than that. Uh, yeah. We actually have lead groups, you know, uh, upper production uh, executives already headed out to uh, Korea to start planning for the Winter Games. And also, we've already had a couple trips to Tokyo to talk about the Summer Games in uh, 2020. So it, it takes wow. a long time to uh, to get, you know, basically a lay of the land to see what the local organizing committees are planning and to see how that impacts uh, or how we can start to develop our plan to do our coverage of the games. Mm -hmm. Well, geez, in, in the in Korea or Tokyo 2018, 2020, I mean, do they even have venues yet? How do you know what you're going to need in terms of the physical infrastructure that's that's there? It's not there yet, is it? Uh, in some cases, it is there. Uh, they're, they'll take existing facilities and uh, they'll do some retrofitting to them to make them acceptable to the IOC. Uh, and I think these early meetings are really uh, used as a, as a planning resource to the local organizing committees to see if their plans and ideas make sense for the broadcast. So it's a, it's a very uh, you know, cooperative sort of um, a discussion that happens as far as what the venue facilities are. I mean, we don't pick the facilities, but we give our input as to, you know, looking for camera locations and any other type of overlay that they have to do the facility that can, you know, support the television broadcast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, tell us a little bit about, about the process of getting ready for, you've told us a little bit about the planning, the early stage planning. Uh, now you're sort of thinking about 2018, 2020. Uh, we've got 2016 coming uh, sooner than that. Uh, obviously, you're farther along in the planning stage. Uh, how does it how does it go from that early planning stage to there you are at the Olympics trying to cover uh, some number of venues, a bunch of different activities? Um, what's what's what? Give us an overview of that process. Well, um, for example, for Rio, we really start with what we did in London, and we took a we take a look and see how similar uh, the venues, the competitions are to earlier summer games, and that gives us sort of a baseline to do our planning off of. So typically, we'll you know we'll bring about the same number of cameras, uh, you know, video servers, ENG kits and people to the next set of games based off of what we did in London and if it worked. I mean, we always do sort of a look back on what worked and what didn't work. We also take a look at the new technologies that are coming along to see how best to implement them uh, into a new infrastructure that we're moving into, for example, like Rio. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, two, two years out, there's typically a big meeting with the uh, IOC and the host broadcaster to go over the initial sort of plans that they've drawn up. At that point, we get to see what the venues are, how much compound space, 
you know, we get a look into what the customs rules are probably going to be at games time. Uh, and we, it's a really a collection of information and also meeting the new uh, host broadcast production teams to see what their plans are because their plans will change, you know, in between games based on what they learned at past games. So now, what do you, what do you mean by the, the what, pardon me for interrupting. What do you mean about the, by the host broadcaster? I mean, aren't you the broadcaster? Isn't NBC the broadcaster of the games? Well, remember, there's NBC isn't the only person that broadcasts the Olympics. Uh, there's true. another. Everybody else in the world is uh, looking to broadcast their country's athletes in their own home markets. And over the course of in the old days, you know, whatever country had the Olympics, the the major national broadcaster would be the host broadcaster. So they would plan the Olympics, uh, you know, get all the equipment and then provide a world feed uh, to other broadcasters that came in. If you remember, ABC did that back in uh, Lake Placid for, you know, the 1980. Is it that? 80, uh, 80 Olympics, something like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, what happened is, you know, depending what country you went to, you got a different level of production value basically based off of what some of the national broadcasters could deliver. Mm -hmm. So the IOC, you know, slowly has been transitioning to having a more consistent production, uh, produ level of production. Mm -hmm. And it, this really started, to, it really started in uh, 2008 when uh, the IOC started a corporation called OBS or Olympic Broadcast Services. And they were tasked to, to help the national broadcasters uh, with their planning and production values for the host broadcaster. And slowly that's transitioned into actually the OBS now acts as the host broadcaster uh, for the Olympics going forward. So ah, no, for matter example, what, no matter what country they're in. Exactly, no matter what country. For example, in Sochi... OBS was the host broadcaster, and they were responsible for getting all the OB vans or mobile units into the country, you know, hiring the production teams and basically doing all the facility planning for the Olympic broadcast. And what we do is we sort of ride on OBS's coattails uh, using their, their production as sort of a, a baseline for our coverage. Of course, we, you know, to, to focus on American athletes and American stories, we augment the facilities that they put into a venue uh, with our own facilities so we can focus on the American athletes or the stories that, you know, our production people feel are important to, you know, our viewers in the United States. 